So I think we move to combustion and liquid rocket engines, which is the prime subject which we need to deal with. But uh, let us see what I have to say on the subject. I will begin by saying that the combustion process is quite complex in the case of self-igniting propellants. You can do this uh, in two ways. The it's called like injection, which means the fuel is injected on the fuel or unlike injection, fuel is, in, is injected against the oxidizer. In the case of Vikas engine, it is like injection. You have uh, the fuel elements which impinge on each other, oxidizer elements which impinge on other. It is the droplets, uh, subs, this secondary atomization processes which bring fuel and oxidizer together. If you bring the fuel and oxidizer together in the primary mode, that means you impinge one over the other, the heat release rates are very large and the coal combustion process gets completed very fast. Keep this in mind because it has implications on the stability of the operation of the engine. The liquid to product conversion process involves liquid liquid reactions anyway in hypergolic system. This is unlike non-hypergolic propellants where atomization process has a more direct role. This is something which you need to keep in mind. The extent of liquid phase mixing depends on the injection diameter, injector diameter and the velocity. The injection process is designed to reduce the coupling between the combustion chamber processes and the feed system dynamics. This reduces the incidence of low frequency instability. Otherwise, the pressure drops are low, any pressure fluctuation here will imply that the feed rates will change and normally there is always a phase difference between uh, the time at which it is delivered and time which, at which it feels the pressure. Because of this you will find low frequency stability is typically in the range less than 100 hertz or so and whenever if somebody gets 100 hertz, he is not worried in design, he knows what to do which is and this is done by essentially removed by essentially remove the coupling and you create enough pressure drop across the injector, typically 10 to 15 atmospheres if you provide in the liquids, you will discover the processes which occur in the combustion chamber are decoupled from what happens in the feed system. And so, low frequency instability possibilities are low. Not only that, the injector behavior has some features. If you, you pressure drops, pressure drops across the injector, they are low, you will find hysteresis. You will find when the flow goes in, it has got a certain coefficient of discharge. When it uh, comes down for whatever reasons and it re injects, you will find hysteresis behavior and the coefficient of discharge will change and we should not experience such behaviors because it will add to the coupling. So, to avoid the coupling between the feed system and the combustion chamber, one must keep the pressure drops reasonably high and I have indicated here is the 8 to 12 atmospheres and what does this do? This leads to velocities at the injection of 30 to 50 meters per second and uh, you allow for the frictional resistance by invoking a coefficient of discharge, you know VL is equal to CDA injector root of 2 rho L delta P. And the drop size due to impingement and other processes is proportional to injector hole diameter and reduces this drop diameter reduces with increasing velocity because the, the droplet diameter to injector diameter goes like by Weber number to the power of n and n is typically 0.5 in the such cases and it is the dynamic pressure to the surface tension force. Okay, when jets impinge, the liquids mix and also break up into droplets. The liquid phase reaction leads to heat release and breakup of liquid into final droplets. These droplets interact with each other at varying mixture ratios and release heat. A complex dynamics occurring in a short domain uh, after the injector phase. Of course, there will be very fast gas phase reactions that lead to near equilibrium composition and the achievement of the adiabatic flame temperature. The time it takes for this to occur and the distance travelled in this period it settles the combustor size. In this case, it is only decided by experiments on actual systems. You may ask me why. Now, you may try and do a complex design of injector dynamics. The key parameter which on which things depend on the droplet diameter and there is a distribution around that. And the processes which occur to create that, uh, they are very complex. You may say, I want to model it. Yes, you can model that, there will be issues around that and you have to validate it. The only validation for such a model is a test. The test is actual 
performance of the engine. And uh, well, if you are good enough, you will create a sufficiently complex model. You do sufficient number of experiments, including in the full scale, to ensure that the model is correct. Once you have done that, keep the model to yourself, don't give it to anybody else. This is the typical strategy adopted by all the people. So, it is only decided by experiments and the combustor size is decided by L star, uh, characteristic length, which is the volume of the combustion chamber divided by throat, a point which uh, Dr. Varun talked about yesterday. And uh, the typical value of L star for hypergolic propellants is about 0 0.7 to 0 0.9 meter and higher pressures have a slightly lower L star. But the change is not too much. As you see, 0.7 to 0.9 meters, you can choose 0 0.9, 0 0.8, whatever is shown. For a given engine thrust and a choice of the chamber pressure, uh, because you know C star, so you can get the throat area. F is equal to CFPC 80, and so 80 you know, coefficient of thrust you know, therefore you can, you can compute, uh, you know, PC and you can get 80. When you know this 80, the choice of, with a choice of L star, you get the volume of the combustion chamber. With the choice of the combustion chamber to throat torsical area, we actually get the combustion chamber diameter as you will see next. Yeah. Uh, we will discuss it on the way and if you can come back with the questions on some of them because I am going to look at some of the other aspects as well. Uh, non hypergolic propellants, LOX, kerosene, LOX, hydrogen. Both kerosene and hydrogen are used as regenerative coolants. Kerosene is close to the boiling point and hydrogen will always be a gas. The V, inject, v injector, velocity of the injector for liquids is 30 meters per second, gas around 150 meters per second. The density is low in spite of the fact that you have higher pressure and so you need a cross section which is large. Even if you provide for that, the velocity has to be of this class. For impinging jets or swirling jets, the drop size due to impingement or and our primary and secondary atomization process is proportional to injector hole diameter and reduces with injection velocity. This feature is, is general, I mean you can take that as valid all the time, whether it is F1 engine related stuff or any other engine, increasing the injector hole diameter always um, increases the drop diameter. Coaxial injection systems show atomization, vaporization and reaction processes depending on whether the combustion process occurs under supercritical conditions. This, this other parameter gets introduced. Experiments have shown that there is a difference between subcritical and supercritical operations. You will see here subcritical operation of uh, in one of the let us say orifices, nozzles which come out, uh, you will find hydrogen and oxygen coming from here, you will find the, uh, the liquid hydrogen breaks off into ligaments and droplets at a certain distance. In the case of supercritical operation, I think this was also brought up by Varun yesterday, you will see that comes out as lumps, oxygen lumps and uh, they use words called threads and some. These are observations of whatever has happened uh, in single uh, injection hole systems. And this is also combustion that will occur at uh, 60 atmospheres, supercritical. And this is window of about 80 millimeters length and 25 millimeters taken from a German research. Okay. Um, well, this particular system has a combustion efficiency of 90 percent, so it is very representative of what happens in reality. Okay, you will find more uh, pictures of this from actual systems. This is the oxygen jet, sub subcritical injection, combusting condition. Velocity of oxygen velocity 10 meters per second, hydrogen velocity is 300 meters per second, diameter 1 millimeter here. Chamber pressure is uh, 15 atmospheres typical. Left to right to bottom, axial position in the face plate and at various distances. That is, this distance is a face plate from here 12, 12 millimeter, 24 millimeter, 36 millimeter, 48 millimeter, 60 millimeter. You see how it is developing over there. They have taken, it is a composite picture taken from various sections. So, it breaks down at some conditions around 60 mm also from the injector 
that 1 mm to 60 mm, you will find the whole thing has broken down. That is what I am saying here. Born from the locks, yet core, thread like structure develop and grow. They do not detach but dissolve and fade away. Several tens of diameters downstream. Lock core breaks up into large lock slums dissolve in the same way. Yet break up length decreases with increase in chamber pressure. A typical 100 atmosphere case, oxygen lumps have completely depleted by about 70 diameters. See, some of these give some insight into the way things behave inside the combustion chamber. Okay, more pictures here. You will see the um, flame from that from the actual combustion system, locks jet and a bright spot which is the recirculation zone close to the injector face or the front face and uh, well what else can you get out of that. The same picture, uh, top is burning, uh, bottom is the actual flow field of the system, when it is not burning you can look at how things are. Okay, here the jet flows. But actually combustion system is what, what you see. As I mentioned, in summary, this is about 70-82 diameters from the injection point, uh, you will discover that um, the whole thing is broken down. Uh, it is a good thing to know because you also can look upon this in the simulations and make sure that simulation is actually used in the combustion chamber, in the full combustion chamber and make design appropriately. Okay, I this may be something which uh, appears uh, like already done piece of work, but just roughly brush through. Um, when you want to burn fuel or propellants efficiently as in diesel engine or rocket engine, you arrange that the liquid becomes fine droplets. I think you know why you want fine droplets, so I do not want to spend time on that, but I have to move ahead. Just want to show you some numbers so that uh, you know what this means. I know that you are aware of it, but you should know. If you look at 1 millimeter droplet and a 30 micron droplet, for equal mass or volume, you will discover that pi d cube by 6 must be same as the number of droplets of the smaller diameter d1 cube and therefore the number of droplets of the smaller droplet will be d0 by d1 cube. So for 1 mm to 30 mm, you have 30,000 droplets, 33,000 droplets for 30 micron in comparison to 1 mm. So, the surface area is not as much change, is about 30 times. And this which is the count, in, when you look at evaporation, it is surface area dependent stuff. So, nevertheless, the benefit from going from 1 mm to 30 microns is that you have a much larger surface area for evaporation and therefore, atomization is an important element to convert the liquid to gases in as short a time or space as possible. Okay, um, since evaporation depends on the surface area, you will discover that the benefits are very substantial. So, to level, to achieve this level of atomization, diesel engine injects liquid through an orifice, which we talked about some time ago, and uh, for the first short duration. And the same thing is true with uh, rocket engines as well, though one does not use such small diameters, except in the case of monopropellants and things like that. Even there, the diameter is about 0.5 millimeter. In the case of gas turbine engines, that diameter is typically about uh, half an mm to 0.7 mm. Okay. If you look at atomizers in practical systems, you must remember that the liquids and the fuel, uh, oxidizers and fuel liquids must be introduced separately. And you can, this injector is this is the you know old time which was being tried out, nobody uses it, it is called shower head injectors. And the mixing is not going to take place directly, it takes some distance and coagulant injectors may be thought of as equivalent of this, but designed differently. Like doublet, unlike doublet, that means fuel and oxidizer impinge here, oxidizer and oxidizer or fuel impinge separately. A point which I discussed a few moments ago, you can use triplets pentad, it is up to you, you can design whatever you think you want in this. In fact, so many attempts of such designs are put in the F1 uh, injector design. And you have, um, you can also, there are also questions about it, which direction do you want the jets to go, 
you want to get axial, you want to go to a certain angle, you can, depending on the momentum you push here and here, you will find the resultant uh, direction will be of one kind. And you have concentric tubes with hot swirler or with swirler and there are many options here too. And this is the standard coaxial injector based on the Russian design. Uh, it has locks coming here and you can also introduce that swirl here and hydrogen coming here axially. You can introduce hydrogen also as swirl. Therefore, the ever so many combinations exist in the design of the system. Yeah, I mentioned to you about the coefficient of discharge uh, and the hysteresis of it, which is just to show it here. I think you talked about it earlier. We have another design called Pintle injector, which was de developed and supposed to be very stable operation. And it's not really used these days in any of these systems, but you can read that in the literature. Uh, I want to move on quickly to some other aspects as well. The combustion processes in advanced liquid rocket engines at very high pressures borders on critical to supercritical combustion processes which need to evolve proper equation of state which I mentioned to you. So, if you are doing some analysis on this, you must know how things behave. It is important because uh, the steady operation also should be, should be, you should be able to predict it and compare it with the experiments. And if you have the right model, you can also make predictions for instability. Impinging injectors are used in upper stage engines and catalytic monopropellant thrusters. Most large engines use coaxial injectors like the one discussed earlier. We saw various details. So, many researchers have experimentally investigated the subject in the last two decades. So, the examination of the combustion behavior shows that the propellants coming out of the injectors have very limited in interaction with neighbors. Uh, this is particularly true of coagul injectors. Let me explain this a little bit. That is, when you have uh, a system like this, okay, you can design each injector or each group of injectors in a slightly different way. You have a choice. It has been done in the case of the Russian engine locks kerosene system. Uh, when such things happen, you are tempted to ask, why have they done that? Is there something tricky? You may say, I don't care, I will do something else. You are always worried. It's a large engine. To construct that engine is, is very difficult. You don't minimize the engineering aspect of that. It's a very difficult thing to construct the, such an engine. And you may build one engine, it takes six months, you do a test, it fails, you are in trouble. You do not know which way to go. So, you are always have to think through carefully, say, am I doing the right thing in changing or am I doing the right thing in accepting? And there may be questions on both sides. So, sometimes you have to hold your heart and say, look, I think this is right and I will go ahead. And when you get into problem, you face them and you have to resolve the issues at that time. Okay, the point I want to make is, if you look at each one of them, there is a certain O by F for each of these injectors. And you can make them differently. But it turns out when you do an analysis of the system, if you take such groups, they, the groups flow inside the combustion chamber. Uh, if I want to show you, <coughs> the flow to the combustion chamber in specific streams. It is true even here, they take a specific track and come here. Which means if you take a group of injectors, you can track them they actually move with the same O by F. So, if you have different O by F across the cross section, those different streams move at different O by F. There is not too much of lateral interaction. The reason is also simple. When you have high injection velocities, the axial momentum is so large, there is hardly anything that is possible for lateral action in terms of mixing. Okay. So, that is the point I made here. And I am also saying creating a near uniform oxidative fuel distribution across the cross section, excepting the near, near the wall region where you have film cooling, seems appropriate to get high performance. It seems appropriate to get high performance without instability also, a point we will talk about later. Impinging jet injectors have a mass flux distribution involving droplets over a distance of 10 to 15 injector hole diameters. Uh, this is susceptible to response to acoustic oscillations. Again, I will address it later. But just to let you know, if two injectors meet here, it creates a spray. Depending on the orientation, you may get 
something like this or something like this. You can design it in various ways. And therefore, you have droplets coming and occupying various zones in front. To determine how much of oxidizer to fuel are coming, you have methods of doing that. You can collect the liquids and say this is the mass flow flux distribution at various stages after the injection has been has happened. And that is important uh, as well when you are looking at the susceptibility to instability and uh, we will see that as I mentioned a little later. The, the flow behavior for coagulated injectors seems more complex particularly when the process is close to critical conditions otherwise it is mostly axial. It appears that efforts are needed to create a well justified computable model of steady state combustion process from the physical processes in coagulated injectors. Whereas impinging jet injectors have been addressed for a period of time, so coaxial injectors have not been addressed as much. And they have been addressed uh, through computational tools by some groups, but not addressed as much. The key two key parameters of combustor design are com chamber diameter and length, and there are others that need to be defined. Uh, need to be defined are number of injection holes on coaxial injectors that control the density of propellant injection. Experiments have shown that L star for locks. H2 system is about 0.7 meter and for lock kerosene is about 1.2 meter. And uh, that you can understand that uh, kerosene has to evaporate and the only way of that happening is more difficult compared to hydrogen and therefore it needs a larger L star. From the demand of thrust and the charge of the chamber pressure, one can calculate AT and VC as I mentioned earlier. With the charge of the contraction ratio 1.5 to 3, you can get the chamber diameter. Okay, here is some interesting thing that you must note. There are variety of designs. You can take AC by AT as 1.2, you can take as 3, you can take it as 6. Many possibilities exist. Smaller contraction ratio means smaller combustion chamber diameter, smaller cooling surface area desirable for the optimization of the regenerative cooling process. Because if you have to have a large combustion chamber, you have to cool all of it. This surface area is large, so the heat flux is much larger, so you need to account for it. But when you have a smaller combustion chamber, uh, that area with, through which the liquid flows is smaller, so you are slightly better off in trying to cool that zone. On the other hand, the mass flux through the combustion chamber will be higher. This causes stagnation pressure drop due to friction and loss of specific impulse. You see here that uh, if you take PC2, the to PC1, that is stagnation pressure at the aft end divided by the stagnation pressure at the head end, it is 0 0.97 here, 0 0.9 here, it is even lower here, about 0.85 or so. So that means you are going to lose the stagnation pressure, that means you are going to lose the performance. Because what matters is the fact that what delivered to the nozzle or stagnation pressure at which it is delivered to the nozzle that gives you the thrust PC80 by C star that PC refers to the stagnation pressure at the inlet to the throat. Okay, I have few more aspects to be looked at. Further on combustion liquid rocket engines, if you look at uh, variety of engines in the respect of what I talked about in the previous slide, you have F1 engine RD 170, SSME engine, this, these are Russian engines. This is a French engine, American engine, Russian engine, uh, French engine. Various levels of thrust, various propellant combinations, various injector types, but you will see that most of these are coaxial swirl. Some have swirl, some do not have swirl. And the key point I want you to address is flow rate per element and thrust per element. That is, uh, what does this mean? You have certain thrust, there are certain injector hole combinations. How much is the thrust per element? That is a measure of the intensity of combustion uh, at which you are using the combustion chamber. And the point to note is that um, Russian engines make a choice of much higher density propellant injection with coaxial injection. That troubled them, in fact, choice of that troubled them much less in terms of instability compared to F1 engine. The amount of F1 effort that has gone into F1 engine in terms of instability removal is mind boggling. But this is happening in one end of the world, the other end of the world 
they are happily building large engines without any instability. So, it's a matter which is perplexing and one of the aspects is related to the fact that they use only coaxial design. You may ask why is it they use coaxial design, why did they not contemplate uh, injectors, impinging jet injectors. Uh, many of these related to history and where exactly they got the input from when World War II occurred, they got some hardware from Germany, some people from Germany, some native thinking, some combination led to coaxial injection systems. Uh, in the American systems, they developed based on impinging jet. Once you get into a certain design, proceed for, proceed some distance along the line. You have invested money, you have invested people, you have done experiments. Now, maybe halfway down you realize that you could have changed to something else because you learned from some other sources that ah, Russians are using essentially coaxial injectors. You can't change at that time. You are committed to certain action. That's the reason which I mentioned to you in large scale developments, you need reviews, you need re a lot of thinking. And sometimes you think for yourself and pray, Lord, that that choice is right. I am not saying this in a loose sense. It is true for every designer in every part of the country. You are taking great risks when you take a large system design. You get input from many sources, some conflicting, some supporting. Where they are supporting, you take that decision, no problem. When there is conflict, uh, you have to make a choice. Where, where is it? Which is it you trust more? Sometimes a calculation is more trustworthy than an experimental result and the calculation otherwise worthless compared to an experiment. You, you make a combination in your mind, think and make a choice and that works, it works, that is all. Okay? Um, in summary, I want to say, we have looked at many aspects of liquid propulsion systems, act very briefly. Normally liquid propulsion rockets occupy a three credit course in a university. So, you need to look at each one of them in some detail. But just as a taste of what it is, we have just looked at it briefly. Changes in propulsion, space propulsion system will definitely occur through introduction of green propellants, uh, not because of great desire, of pressure. Research is underway this time in ISRO laboratories. Upper stage propulsion system will use self-igniting monomethyl hydrogen, nitrogen tetroxide pressure fed system. And that is something which you can't change too much. Use of impinging injectors is appropriate for small thrust engines. So, while I should not look like uh, blaming impinging jet injectors, they are still of value in small thrust chambers. Better choice for large thrust engines is certainly coagulant injectors. I, I must also tell you something I would not have known some years ago. This is something which uh, in the Russian technology development came to my attention, then only many of these things uh, seemed so interesting, I, I must say that. And it is also, also because lot of, we are, we are actually faced with lot of American literature. Russian literature is not as much available, nor are we affected by it. So, this is the problem of culture. A large engines in India will get sustained with current UDMH N204 systems, is it not? Many minor developments may take place, but they are only minor. They involve absorption of technologies and stage combustion cycle based semi cryo lock kerosene engine, that is something to happen. And they also involve including minor improvements in LOX LH2 engine, which have been successful. Involve development of LOX machine engines around the current LOX uh, LH2 engine, I think it will become successful. Injection systems on semi cryo and full cryo engines will, will be with coaxial injectors. Issues of steady combustion are already dealt with or will be dealt with. Dealing with possible problems of combustion instability and some of the engines will require better physics based computational approach in coming times. I think these are the issues I wanted to bring to your attention. Finally, I want to ask, I want to just show you this feature in relationship to what uh, Dr. Varun mentioned yesterday about equilibrium. He spoke a whole lot about um, the instability which will occur when the pressure index is more than 1 and stable when it is less than 1, for case of solid rocket engine. That is true. In solid rocket engine, burn rate index should be less than 1, so that the operation is statically stable. And nobody ever talks of static stability for liquid rocket engine. You, know, you can't find it in a book, I can assure you. But the answer is simply here. If you look at the flow to the nozzle, as in this case, you will find 
it is a straight line with an angle slope of 80 by c star, this is drawn with respect to PC, so the slope of this line is 80 by c star. But if you look at injection, the CD, A injector, square root of 2 rho L into P manifold which is ahead of the injector um, and uh, PC because of this it comes like this. So, as PC increases the flow rate comes down. That is the reason why if, if some pressure pulse, pulse increases the pressure, flow rate comes down. If pressure pulse decreases the chamber pressure, flow rate increases. So, it is statically stable. And I must also tell you it is true with hybrid rockets that the oxidizer to fuel ratio is large. So, mostly oxidizer which comes in 25 percent fuel, 75 percent oxidizer. So, it comes through the injector. So, this broad behavior which you see here is also valid for hybrids which means liquid rockets are always statically stable. There is no great uh, solace because when they get into trouble they do dynamically unstable and put you into difficulty. It is that we should be addressed and we will perhaps look at it tomorrow. Till that time, goodbye. I have a set of references which you may want to look at uh, later. Now, all what I have written here is based on uh, most of it is covered in these references. <laughs>